Hey guys, it's Matt. Welcome to Speed Tutor, and I'm going to show you an awesome collection of render features which all can be used as a series of post processing effects which are absolutely free and you probably didn't even know they existed. Most of these are not in URP by default, but they include things like ambient occlusion, screen space reflections, pixelation, outlines, UI blurs, and so many awesome effects to create things like being drunk or really distorted effects, which I know you'll love. I'm going to teach you how to import, install, and use them in your URP projects and make it look even better. And be sure to check out the Unity Mega Bundle and all the sales down below. Because if I give you this example here, you can see that in URP, everything's built up with its own pipeline asset and then accompanying renderer. And the renderer holds specific rendering features. Now, in this example that's from Unity in the Unity URP packages, it comes with a screen space ambient occlusion already included. It comes with a global volume and other things. And to add custom render features, you need to add them here. But with custom packages, once you add them, you will get additional features. Now, you can add volumes with post-processing effects to volumes that you can set. If you walk inside this volume, it will do something. And as you can see, when my camera entered inside here, you can see the effect of the volume. And if you do need to create your own volume to be used locally or globally, you can create any empty game object, add a component and create one called a volume. Then you can add your own profile into here, or you can just hit new and you can create your own custom profile. And then once that's created, you can start adding post-processing or whatever you want to start adding to the scene. I remember a global one will affect the entirety of the scene, no matter where the location and a local one, you need to make sure that this has a collider so you will be able to walk inside it like the one that's included in this scene. You can see that it's a massive collider and when you're inside that, the post-processing will change. But if you don't want to do that, you can actually do it on your renderer. So it can affect your scene globally without you needing to control it with a game object. So you can add a new renderer feature. We can add the global volume feature, which when we add that, you can choose, you can give it a name if you want, and then choose a volume profile. This one uses the high quality volume profile. And if we click on that, it just includes some tone mapping with ACs, some bloom, and some vignettes. Now, if I disable the local volume, which my camera is currently in, you can see that my global volume directly affects this. And then as if you change things, it will affect your scene globally. I'd say one of the most important post-processing effects that you can add to your game is something called ambient occlusion. It isn't in URP by default and it can't be added on the post-processing stack without first adding it as a rendering feature. You need to go to your renderer, which you can usually find if you go to edit project settings, and then you go across to graphics and you find whichever pipeline asset you're using. From your pipeline asset, you can select the render, which is the one that this is currently using. You can go to the bottom, which talks about renderer features. You can go here and then you can choose from the list. But in my case here, I'm going to choose screen space ambient occlusion. When you add it to your scene, you probably can't see something very accurate. You can see when we start upping the ambient occlusion radius, you can see that the shadowing to the recessed areas where light bounces around and can't quite get inside. And you can adjust things like the intensity, but it's always best not to overdo your ambient occlusion, just to have something that gives you a subtle offset. So in my case here, I've got an intensity of three, radius of 0.1, fall off of 100. So while you're learning about these, be sure to come and support me on Patreon because it really helps me out and you get access to over 225 different scripts, assets and projects you cannot find anywhere else. And there's a big list down in the description too. And we're also going to look at the Unity FX outline, which is available on GitHub to create your own outline. So what I recommend doing when you want to install this is if you scroll to the top of the page and look for the GitHub, you click on here for the release and we're just going to extract and download the source code, which is the zip for 0.8.5. Once you've got that, you will have everything within this folder. So what I recommend is just drag the entire FX outline 0.58 folder into Unity. Once that's done, you will get a bunch of errors and I recommend deleting the post-processing and the HDRP folder. So you will only have the call and the URP left. If you go back on your high renderer, you can add a new render feature and just choose the outline feature. You need to make sure the outline resources does is filled with the outline resources URP section. We do need to make sure that we select the default render pipeline asset and make sure that we enable depth texture. If we go to the outline feature settings and we just say we want to use the layer mask, I've created a layer mask called highlight and you can see my cube over here does have a layer of highlight on it. 
And you can see based on that, I've got an outline test settings. And if we click that, you can create your own for the test settings. You can set whether you want this to be blue, white, whatever that may be. And you can set the width of the outline. And we can also do this to any other objects. And you can see that you will highlight through the environment too. And there's full instructions on the GitHub page too. Now we've got one called the SSR for URP and screen space reflections and in by default in URP. This is its own custom render feature for absolutely free. And we can add this. If you download and import this, we're going to go back on the renderer. We're going to add the reflect render pass. To make this SSR work, you need to make sure that you have the deferred rendering enabled for your lighting setup. And you need to make sure that you have disabled the accurate G buffer normals. Now I'm going to show you this with ArcViz Pro Volume 7 for URP. We'll be able to see the screen space reflections. As long as you have the reflect render pass on your render features, make sure you go to your post processing, your volume, wherever that is. Make sure to add a new override. We're going to go to Gapper Games and add the screen space reflections. Once we've enabled that, we can say all to everything. You can see that nothing changed in the scene. Now, if we press enable, you can see we get accurate reflections around the scene. So you can especially see in reflective objects like this mirror in different objects and on very shiny surfaces. So you can definitely see the accuracy of the reflections in this, say this table and on the reflective walls. And even on things like these walls, as we move up, we can see the reflections in the other rooms. By contrast, you could see how the scene looks with just the general reflection probe reflections. And you've got much less dynamic look of the different shiny surfaces. And do be aware you can affect downsampling steps, the thickness, the samples, to be able to limit the amount of resources that this uses up. Now we're going to look at one called the Unified Universal Blur, which is a blur that you can put on a canvas, which is good for obscuring particular UI elements to put things behind others and render things on top. So you can go to the code here and copy the link to this GitHub repository. Go to your package manager and in the top corner, add the little plus sign. It says add package from Git URL. Make sure to paste it in there and press add. You will then get the Unified Blur Shader. Then you can go onto the renderer, add a new component, and choose the universal blur feature. You have various settings in here that you can adjust the intensity, the down sampling, the scale. Then you need to assign this material, the Kawazi blur material, if it's not already. Then what I'm going to do is go UI and create a brand new canvas. Then from there, I'm right clicking my canvas, creating a brand new image component. And then we need to make sure that we add our own material here so we'll use the universal blur for ui material and then what i'm going to do is i'm just going to add the default ui sprite which comes with unity i'm going to click on the anchor in the top left of the inspector here and click on the bottom right to expand this selection so then you can see the complete blur in my game you can go back to the renderer you can adjust the intensity of how this should look this could be used that you've just woken up out of bed and you're using an additional post-processing effect that the light could look really bright and you need your eyesight to adjust over time. Now, a good, another good example is you can add your own text over the top of this and you can still see that the background is fully blurred in this context. Then we've got an image effect called image flow, which can help the create a look of confusion or the distortion on edges of things that move. So we'll download and import this one into Unity. Go back onto the renderer and make sure we add flow FX. Again, make sure to open this out so it'll dispose of the error that is there. Then we can go back on our render volume, add a new override, vol FX, and we can just add something called flow. Now, when we edit this, we can adjust the fade amount, the strain amount, the angle of something that you can see the distortion as it twists the view of the screen. And we can also adjust the flow so you can set the offset between X, Y, and Z. So now if I move around the screen, you can create that look of something that's maybe it's really bright sun, or maybe you're just confused or drunk. And I think it's actually a really nice effect. Next one, we're going to look at the pixelation effects. We'll open up that in the Unity editor, go to download and import that one. Now, if we go back onto our renderer and make sure that we add the pixelation, you can see if we open that out, we've got the pixelation curve, the grid, and we've got some settings within here. Then if we go back to our volume, go on the override and choose the pixelation, we will enable all the features. 
If I set the color to blue in my case, and then I adjust the impact on the scene, I'm gonna adjust the scale so we can adjust how pixelated it will look in the scene. You can set whether you can see the grid or something to make it look more of a stylistic effect. You can make it more rounded or unrounded, depending on the option that you have. And you can set a different palette if you want to create different effects. And if you don't see this render effect appear first time, make sure you open out the pixelation render feature and it will pertain to an error, but you can just clear that and then you can adjust the scale to make the scale of this pixelation happen. And if you do add a palette effect, be very careful which one you add because some of them do break the system and you'll have to remove the render feature and this post-processing. We're going to now take a look at the old movie post-processing, which will open up in Unity and we'll download and import this one. Now, if we navigate back to our renderer and we either add the old movie FX, make sure you open this out because sometimes there'll be an error which just says that something will be removed just so that you make this work. And this does come with its own flickering vignette and other features. If you go to your volume and you make sure you add another override, use a vol FX and choose old movie. We can up the grain and you will see a little bit of fizziness on the edge of this water. You can set the noise to different levels. So it can be A, B, C, D, and E. And these ones have a load of different effects if you're going for that old movie style. And again, you can up and decrease the grain to make this effect look more apparent. You can set the noise alpha to make it fade slightly more. You can add jolts to the movement of the screen so you can see that it's always moving. And you can increase or decrease the FPS. Then you can actually add some vignette because it comes with it included. Now, if we press play, you can see the effect on the screen for this type of thing that goes on. We're going to look at one called the VHS post processing. I'll leave the link down below and we can get it from the Unity Asset Store. Now we can open up in Unity and you will be able to get this from the package manager if you search my assets and search for VHS. Now from that, I'm going to go back to the PC high definition renderer here. We're going to add a new rendering feature. and I'm going to call this the VHS FX and you can see that it will be after post processing and the glitch effect will be red. Now I could go to whichever volume I'm using, either the global one or the local one in this case, and I can add a new override. And if you look at Vol FX, you can do look for the VHS effect. And if we enable all of these effects, I'll just put everything up really high. Now you'll see the effect of this VHS post pressing shader on this scene, as if we might be watching something from another time or a recording of footage that you might have already previously recorded. I'm going to take a look at this post-processing scan render feature that we can get hold of. And this one's by this developer and you can find the GitHub and the link. What I'm going to do is download the entire zip for this project. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to extract that folder and within the assets and we go inside the Merza Beige and the post-processing scan. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag this post-processing scan into Unity. So I just drag that into my assets folder and everything will be here. We're going to go on the URP a render asset. We'll add a new render feature and we'll add a custom render pass feature. And then it is looking for a material that we want to use. So if I open up the post processing scan, go to materials, then I'm going to add either post processing scan one or two. Once you've added that renderer feature, you need to set where the origin is. Now you can see it in this scene here because I've already set the origin. But if you want to do that to set another one, you can create an empty game object wherever you want this to be. I'm just going to place it closer to the tent area and then I'm going to add the post processing scan origin and then make sure that you add yourself the material in there that you were using. And based on the material, you can adjust the color that it uses. You can adjust its screen tiling, the power, the speed. So you can make these flashes much, much quicker. Or if you want something much slower to do a sort of a detection of a range across an area and you can set the range of the overall scans if you want that to go over a much wider area. So you can create kind of a sci-fi ping based or scanning effect. Now we're going to look at one called the screen outline. So again, you can add this to your assets. Again, you can open this one in Unity. We'll download and import. If once this is imported, if we go back onto our renderer and then we'll add the outline filter, which does come with some default modes and the default color. If we go onto our volume and go to vol FX and add the outline effect. Now you can see if we up the sensitivity, we don't notice anything happen. What we need to do is actually adjust the color that we have here. You can see that the alpha is already set by default to the lowest value. Now, if we set 
this all the way up to 100% on the alpha by clicking the object in the top left. And then we grab the node on the top right and up the alpha too. Now let's say we're set between this red and this darker red. You can see that there's modes for luma, chroma, then depth. And depth can work quite well if you want an overall screen outline. Now if you see if I adjust this, you can see it very subtly across these plants. We can adjust the thickness. I may want to reduce the thickness overall, but it allows you to add a full outline to the scene by giving contrast to the different zones in your scene. Next one here is called the gradient map. We'll download and import this one into Unity now. Now, if we go back to the screen renderer again, add the renderer, which is the gradient map by adding the renderer feature. You make sure to open it out to get rid of the error that appears. If we go back to our volume and add the fall effects and gradient map, you can then say you can adjust the weight of the gradient map and how much it will affect the scene. You can adjust the gradient editor. But in this case, I'm going to select the top left and up the alpha value of the gradient. And then I'll just set my image to red. So then you can see from my gradient, if I up the value, you can see that the gradient has been set across different areas of the screen. And we can adjust the mask value by decreasing or increase the maximum levels of the mask on either side. So we can adjust the lower amount have less red we could do the same to bring the blue back so these are some awesome render features that i found that you can get hold of today for absolutely nothing and they can really extend your unity and make it even more awesome and of course mention down below if you found any render features that really help you out because i'd love to check those out too check out my patreon to get over 225 different scripts assets and projects you cannot find anywhere else and check out all the links in the description for all the best sales and the mega bundle that Unity have got on right now. Massive thank you to Peter Steiner and Vera Shutha for their amazing support. And thank you to everybody else who comes to watch the video. So don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.